Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. WA Real brings you real and authentic stories from fascinating people here in Western Australia. Stories to inspire and guide you to take action to be all you can be. Do you have a nagging business idea but don't know where to start? Or have you had a business idea that's been torn to shreds and wish you'd had help testing it to some depth beforehand? Today's, de today's guest is from the thick of the Perth startup scene, Chris Nurse. Originally born in the 1960s in Bradford in England, Chris moved to WA in 2002. An early pioneer in the IT space, Chris dropped out of college when he realised that by building a computer with his dad at 12, he knew more than most, most who were teaching the course. Chris went on to work in numerous IT solution architect and CTO roles for a variety of large companies, including the resource sector. In 2014, Chris had a big aha moment when he took the role of CTO for the Telethon Kids Institute. He claims that he claims he then found his calling to stop helping, help making bigger holes in the ground <laughs> and help making a bigger difference in the world. As well as sitting on a number of boards of social businesses, Chris is founder of Machine, which provides a platform to accelerate impatient innovators by really focusing on the clarity of their purpose, vision and mission, and thus ensuring that team supporters, customers and investors really understand the why, what and how of the new product or service that's on, being offered. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Bryn. It's a pleasure. Cool. So, like I said in the intro, you moved here in 2002. What was it that brought you to Western Australia? Um, yeah, just this huge meltdown just before moving here. Um, so I was running a, an R&D company in Spain, and that whether you want the kind of the long version at this point or some kind of super condensed and you can drill into it. But uh, I was in the UK in 99, uh, got a call from a mate that says, I have this huge, horrible technical problem, can you come and help me solve it? And I landed that night in Malaga as opposed to Malaga in Spain. <laughs> Malaga. <laughs> in Malaga in Spain. And um, literally came from the airport straight into this meeting with an inventor, an investor, and my mate who was the managing director. Uh, and they said, can you solve this horrible problem? And I went, yeah, you just go to the internet and you download this thing, plug it into what you're trying to build and you'll be good. And two weeks later, my mate got sacked and I got made the managing director of this R&D company. Right. Uh, fast Are you still forward. mates? Uh, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but I think that's probably what pride can do to friendships as well. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's good. There's a, a bit more of a backstory to that. Um, so over the next couple of years, we went on this really exciting uh, $1.5 million journey of building a laptop, printer, scanner, camera into this mobile office like a briefcase. So you take this mobile office, you go do what you want, whatever you want him to do. Anyway, uh, I flew to America in 2001 in July. I uh, had an awesome time being there. July, uh, the, is it July 4th? The fireworks and all that lot, 4th of July. Anyway, filed a patent, went back to the UK, chilled out for a couple of months, and then jumped in my car and drove back down through Spain, uh, watching the TV as these two big towers came down. Right. That night, our business died because the inventor was Iranian and the inventor was Armenian. The literally, that was it. There were no more conversations ever yeah. about investors. Or, and I just, it was one of those, you know, lowest points where you go, where the hell do I go from here? You know, I'll go to Perth. <laughs> right. What was um, it about Perth at point? Um, well, I, I originally I thought I was going to go to Sydney because my grandma's sister came over on a boat in probably the 60s, I think. Um, uh, so I thought I was going to go to that side where my family was, but I landed in Perth, met somebody. There's kind of a quick click. And then I went to live in Manjimup for two and a half years, which is, what, 200 and odd yep. kilometres south out in the sticks there. Um, but fortunately, one of the guys that was in the organisation in Spain gave me 10 or 12 patents to write. And if you write documents and you've got an internet connection, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. So I was quite happy, you know, living in Manjimup uh, with my new lady friend and, yeah, doing kind of even innovation that, that far back, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Superb. And uh, what, is it, what does it mean to you now to be a West Australian resident? Um, 
it's very different to what it meant to me. Uh, you know, I guess I, you, when you first arrive, you're like you're grateful for just a stable place to live and welcoming people and a fantastic environment. Uh, actually, what it means today to be a West Australian is to help not just future West Australians and future entrepreneurs, but anybody that's got that idea in their head that can make a difference. Yes. Uh, you know, my my what what it means to me and my purpose is to help them do that. Yeah. So that means to develop the economic future and security of WA by helping those ideas make an impact. Superb. So, um, as I said in the intro as well, um, you had this aha moment when you went to yeah. Telethon Kids. Can you tell yeah. us a bit more about how that came about, what it yeah. looked and felt like? I always say, but I have to say hello to this guy, but I always say there are two guys in my life that made the hugest difference. Obviously, one is Dad. I always give a shout out to my dad because that 12-year-old building the computer with my dad, that's why I'm here today. Yes. But Nick Northcott, who was the chief operating officer at the time of Telethon Kids, um, I got introduced to him. He needed some tech advice. And, you know, there's a, I think there's a difference between advice and stuff and it actually making a difference and it actually helping that organization right. uh, what nick shared with me was he was driving a you know large complex number of transformations at the institute uh you know get them to commercialize more research and transform the people and culture as many organizations are doing these days but he kind of looked at me and said you know you, mate your advice is good but I'm getting all these blockers, all this resistance inside. that I can't transform the technology and I don't think you can help from the outside. And I said, well, I don't know what to do about that, mate. And he said, well, yeah, do you want to make bigger holes or do you want to make a difference? So the next day I went back to BHP and quit. Right. And that was it. That and was the, then went that to was work. the ha-ha. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like a challenge. If somebody says to you, you could do this and you deny that opportunity, then there's an unexplored future there. Yes. And... Uh, so you know, there's, a, there's always like a path that you can yeah. see the trajectory on. Yep. And then there's another path which yeah. feels good. Yeah, and probably oh. more unknowns. More unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah more but unknowns on that. There's possibly things in there that can you know, explore. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something. I used to be earlier, kind of, you know, you've heard all kinds of language on this. But I was shit in my pants. Yeah, are you going to one of the most esteemed... Uh, brands, if you like, you know, the Telethon Kids Institute is one of the foremost child health research uh, organizations with, you know, globally esteemed academics. And this guy walks in and says, I'm going to transform your technology and I've never been to university and I'm not qualified to do what I'm about to do, but get out my way. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. It's pretty scary. So that was kind of that unknown path, whereas I could have kept getting up and I would have probably been still, I, think, I hope I would have been good enough to still be at BHP today mm. doing tech stuff for them. Yes. But, you know, what do you want to do? You want to help do tech that makes bigger holes or do you want to help, um, yeah, really make a difference? Mm. And, and, and I, it's not that I personally made the difference when you empower people that can. You yes. feel that multiplication. Yes. So I don't have to be the guy with the mission. If I can help one, two, three, four, five people with the mission, then that's immensely rewarding. Mm. Mm. And it and it brings that sense of meaning. Yeah. To yeah. Your work. Yeah. Why do you get up in the morning and you go, well, because yeah, again, it's scary. At, at Telethon Kids, we had technology that in in certain components was like ten years old, and it could have died at any moment. And that's on my watch. So yes. if all these researchers go, where's my data just gone? And I go, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but I'll come back to you. That's not going to be a good message. It's not. So that's worrying. But, you know, really through engaging with the IT team that, that were there, we really helped them transform and gain confidence and self-belief. And go, nobody else would come to work to do what you guys have to do to keep that thing alive, if that makes sense. Yes. You, know, you wouldn't get out of bed with that kind of risk if you were working for a big mining company to go, oh, they can't afford to redo their IT, it might just die and lose everything. But these people turned up every day to keep that thing living and breathing mm. until somebody could arrive that could then, you know, kind of bring in uh, some more money and bring in some partners that could help move it forward. So, yeah, that purpose, I think that's, yeah, that's well said. Hmm. And, I, and I guess, uh, I don't know about yourself, but um, certainly myself, having worked in the resource sector, you know, 
the jobs are quite stable for a yeah. period of time and the money's quite good and so you don't you get in this nice little comfort jello mold yeah and it's only when somebody or something comes in and pops it yeah and uh yeah the, and yeah. then you start saying oh i could be doing something i could actually be making a living and having meaning at the same time yeah yeah and, and it's you it's funny, I think when it is a truly an aha moment as opposed to a job decision, like job decisions, you go, I'm not happy where I am, I can be happy there. I'm not earning what I think I need to earn. I can earn more there. But I think the ha-ha moment is you just can't deny it. You, you will, you're just compelled to do it. Mm. You know, so I didn't think, you know, I'm at a big minor, I'm getting paid a lot of money. I'm working with great people. I work in, you know, right in the middle of the city. Um, or I can give all all that safety up and that, you know, good income up and take a risk over here. And not only is it more meaningful, but it's a lot more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. <laughs> yeah. For seven months, I didn't know what tomorrow looked like at Telethon Kids because we didn't know what else might go wrong with the IT that we had to, to patch up to fix until we could get all the new kit installed yeah. that would fast forward them. Yeah. You know, now they're, you know, cutting edge. These, you know, the, the researchers there have to invent stuff to solve their problems. So you set them free to do that, uh, and they'll, you know, continue to achieve immense things. Amazing. So now you are founder of Machine, mm. and there's a bit here I was reading. Machine was born out of the frustration of seeing everything being called innovation, <laughs> when all I see is waste, inefficiency, and lack of measurable value. The vision for Machine is to evolve a platform that inspires and liberates one million ideas ah. by providing just enough process, the right tools, and continual, continuous guidance in, um, so innovators will once again deliver measurable value in our communities. Yeah. Can you tell me how you got to this? Where did this vision come from? Yeah. Uh, and how you got to this point now? Yeah, right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll blend a couple of... Let me just blend a couple of stories. Um, I've woken up, you know, so machines are obviously not the first thing I founded and started, right? Mm. Uh, fingers crossed it'll be the most successful we'll, we'll yep. see in 12 months, two years. But I am renowned for building shit that nobody needs. Because right. I can code, I can wake up with an idea for a tech thing, and days later I can be demonstrating something to somebody yes. who's probably as excited as I am because I know them. They share interests. Yes. So, of course, they're going to say, Chris, you've, that's bloody awesome, mate. You should do more of that. So, anyway, 12 months later, I'll, there'll be two customers, me and that mate. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, th this loosely connects back to Telethon Kids, actually. So, um, there was a health hack at Curtin Uni a couple of years ago. And uh, I invited one of the researchers to come down with me. And, but I said, you know, what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Um, and this researcher said, well, it's to help mental, uh, sorry, help um, uh, youth access mental health services right. more frequently with more confidence and so on. Um, and the hypothesis, if I can boldly use that word, was if we build like an urban spoon where kids go and um, encounter uh, provision of these services and then rate them, then all the mates will feel better about going to the same service and so on. Yeah, genius. So I turn up at the health hack Saturday morning and my fingers are on the keyboard and I'm going, I'm the great Chris Nurse and I code. If you've got an idea, I'll build it, they'll come. I got a tap on the shoulder and this guy said to me, What are you doing? So I'm going to build Urban Spoon to get kids to use mental health. He said, uh, did you talk to any of them? Which of them told you that that was the right solution for them? I said, mate, I'm the great Chris Nurse. I can cough this up in seconds, step away. Anyway, within three hours, we'd spoken to kids that said, that's a shit idea. Uh, we prefer YouTube and video to see people that have the lived experience that we've got. And he called a few of his mates because he's an uh, innovation expert for 20 years. It's a guy called Mike Fuller, by the way. Um, he'd uh, been working uh, for five years as state quality manager in Life Without Barriers, so he knew a bit more about people's health and well-being than the geeks sat in front of you today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the, and anyway, so the, the final call was to a few people in mental health services, and they said, "You're going to do what?" And we said, "Yeah, we're going to have them rate your service." And, and they said, 
So you've got people who aren't really in the best place mentally right now, and you can ask them to make a rating decision and write feedback that inspires other people. That's a shit idea. Don't do that. We won't use it. So we pivoted, as we say in startup land. We yeah. built this YouTube platform where kids tell their stories, and we won. Right. So I guess that's really... Um, yeah, a long way around going. Yeah, you know, it, it, Mike really changed my perspective of building widgets to building things and solving problems that people yes. actually need, uh, rather than waking up going, "That's a great idea," and just building it. Yeah. So how's that now led into? So machine. it leads into machine because I have to help other people that probably think like me and uh, be of service to those that don't. So the ones that think like me, I go warning <laughs> yeah just resist that urge to build that widget till you've got a customer nodding and smiling going yeah that will solve my problem i can use that thing i can get value yes um to the other side um you know our, our, in another life i um, help build apps for startups yeah uh, and 80 percent of that business uh two years ago when it launched was from female founders who just said, you know, it's all full of jargon and, and, and it seems to be run by powerful powerful white males that think we live in Silicon Valley and forget that we're in Perth and so on. So really the, the, the connection is to is to come and be off service where people need a bridge from that idea in the head to some kind of plan, to some kind of measurable progress to that idea is now in the market, it's validated, it's accepted, yes. it's creating value. So it's taking them through a process. Yeah, yeah, but just enough process. Yeah. Because um, I was frustrated, Read, I'm not, I'm Impatient Innovator is a great label, uh, I believe, because I can't read the books. You know, there's just the endless stories that the author is claiming almost it's like what we call a retroscope you know you look back and you yes. go, oh yeah i did that but you know you're telling all these stories of innovators historically that have done a little bit say maybe built a prototype gone and asked a thousand people is that any good and the thousand people 500 went yeah and 500 went no so they polished it a bit but now we call that lean startup or we call it customer development or we call it empathy mapping who's got time to learn all that jargon and crap yes. what we can say is empty your head onto this canvas your set of yep. boxes that make you think about who are you doing it for and why what are they going to pay for it? What's it going to cost to make? What else do you need? What skills don't you have that you need to find? And so on. So right. we really help people that have got those ideas in the head, turn them into reality. Right. So just bringing them out, bringing those ideas out. I mean, I find sometimes just the process of writing something down, you can look at it and go, that's daft. Yeah. Or that's really cool. Yeah. And and then the process of then writing things down and then testing and refining. Yeah, Mike has this. Uh, Mike Fuller has this gorgeous term. It's called the tyranny of white space. So the first thing, the first challenge you have to overcome is getting the first word on that piece of paper, isn't it? Yes. Like I'm trying to uh, find ways to succinctly and eloquently tell you my stories today. And you know, rather than have that white space, you gave me some questions, and it was so easy. I had a bit of process, I had a bit of a framework to work in, and I could go, I think all this stuff will be interesting, Bryn, what do you reckon? Yeah. Much, much easier. Whereas if you'd give me a blank page and gone, mate, we're going to have a chat for an hour, can you fill out that white space? And I, You know, thank goodness we've had a, a week or so, I probably could have coughed something up. Yeah. But, you know, it's that tyranny of white space, so our just enough process and the right tools yes. asks you just the right questions at the right time to take you through that planning uh, process to, to convert your idea to reality. When was the point that you spotted this or almost... Well, obviously, you, you, you told me the story about the Telethon Kids where you, you almost saw this little gap. How did you go from spotting gap and mm -hmm. coming up with idea yeah. to actually, right, I'm, I'm going to make this into a thing and I'm going to pursue it and, and, and turn it into a business? And what did yeah. that journey look like for you, Chris? Yeah, right, okay. I, th I think the biggest risk was doing what I've done before, was building something that nobody needs. Yes. Uh, and maybe even bigger than that was somebody going, Chris, you're an idiot. You know the people that created Lean Startup, created Lean Business Canvases to help people get stuff out the head. 
do something, measure its progress yeah. and measure learning. You know, they've been doing this for years longer than you have. Yes. But when I read their books, I just see story after story. I'm going, look, just give me the nuggets. Just tell me to do something because I'm willing to do it. Yes. If you can articulate what it is without a million stories of why. So I spotted the opportunity to help people like me take their optimism, take their energy, and move as quickly as they want to move. Right. Teaching them on the way, and then you learn through that pain. Yeah. You go, and, and hopefully it doesn't take 12 months where you go, oh, shit, I've built another thing that's not needed in the world, you know? Yes. So, um, so having tried to read the books, I got, no, this isn't working for me, and I'm sure it doesn't work for other people, but caution, it's been done before. Um, and if... Um, I'll just fast forward when the first set of users logged into it and looked at our canvases. Uh, the biggest canvas that we have is 23 boxes. You know, customer, value, proposition, resistance. Who the hell knows what this stuff means? Yes. So our uh, imaginary innovator sits in front of this and just goes, I don't know where to start and what do these words mean? So if we face that challenge, all of our competitors have faced that challenge for years and haven't solved the problem. Yes. So uh, so Mike and the team came up with some product ideas of going, well, why don't we just have a chat with them? Ask them these simple questions. What are you developing? Who for? What's their problem? What's the feature of your product that helps that problem? And what's the benefit? Yeah. And then it will fill out the canvas for them. Yes. Turn that into a bot. And now you've got a friend 24 hours a day that goes, tell me about your idea. And you just go, blah, 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 blah. And then he goes, well, now there's your So there's a bot code. asking questions. It will be in a couple of versions time. Yeah. We need to go through those kind of, you know, um, build, measure, learn loops, it's called yes. in Lean Start. We need, so we've built machine. It is a bit of an overwhelming canvas. We've added to it uh, what we call quick tips. So that's in our next version where mm. it goes, oh, hey, I can see you've um, uh, signed up for uh, machine. Um, what's your why? Why does your business exist? Could you just put something in these four boxes? Yes. So that's kind of step one. Uh, then we'll say, right now, who do you serve? Who's going to get value from this? Could you just fill out these few boxes? Yes. And then how do you do what you're going to do and how are you going to measure that you've been successful doing it? Could you just fill out these few boxes? Uh, once people prove to us that that helps them a bit, then bots are just bound to help them. Yes. But if we can sit there initially going, you know, I've got 70 people here that have got ideas that aren't going forward to who's the customer. Mm. So I can just put a little bit of content in there going, here's how to understand your customer. Mm. Go meet them. There's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you actually interact with the customer? Actually? Yeah. So this is, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a challenging question in yes, we do is the quick answer. And then the challenge is how does that scale? Mm. If we bring a million ideas onto our platform, do any of us have time to do that? Um, and we do have a solution for that because the human content is actually a point of difference as well. Um, uh, but I think the bots are, are part of solving that. Yeah, so we, right. we, we need to interact with them initially yes. because we're feeling their pain. Uh, I've had two tremendous startups, one's for social housing, uh, another is a lady who's an elite athlete that's seeking funding for young athletes in future. Yep. Uh, and uh, and they've said, mate, it's overwhelming, I don't know where to start. But 20 minutes later, after I've gone, well, here's a few questions, can you just put something in these boxes? There's the light on. So now I can see what the blocker is to their successful use of our tool. Yes. Um, and then learn to what what is it I need to do to the tool to make it easier to use. So it's critical to interact with them yes. at this stage, uh, and it's taught me so much. And I'm so appreciative for their quite honest feedback. Yes, superb. And um, so I like this idea of taking a lot of you know, it's almost like a jargony process, and then breaking it down to everyday language. And mm. That must uh, was that was that the point of difference that you that sort of I think it is, but it's, yeah, it's certainly not a capability that I that I have though. I've been a geek for 
40 odd years uh, but my wife Tan is a PhD in linguistics right so she can read anything that I write and go nobody's going to understand that but I know what you're trying to say right. <laughs> so here's a better way to say it right. um, and uh, Mike who's on the team similar sort of thing just going you know what w- why do you think that's going to work? What is it you really want to achieve? Uh, and then he'll have his ideas. Well, I think if we do this, we'll get there. So I've really got this awesome team on the journey with me, um, supporting me and, and teaching me every day to go, don't say it like that. People won't understand right. it, you know. <laughs> so now you've built, you've built a team around this as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think that start with your why and yeah. demonst- demonstrate, you know, visibly demonstrate what you believe so you're proving it to people just creates a natural attraction. Uh, and, you know, and again, Mike's this guy that, you know, uh, two years ago tapped me on the shoulder and went, why the hell are you doing that? Yes. Um, so I, I just I just knew that uh, he had to be part of this journey. He already mm. was, you know. Um, but importantly, you know, Mike uh, is activating a community in the world to create social impact, uh, find problems within uh, social enterprises and connect talent that can help solve that. Not right. all technology could be, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll park it because Mike can talk more eloquently about right. that. But, you know, not everything needs a technology solution. But Mike needed technology to activate his community. Yes. Just like you use a podcast today, yes. uh, Mike needs a machine to help his people get their ideas and service designs and so on out of their head. Right. Um, so we were both already, you know, parallel in parallel lanes, and then we just went, ah, oh, let's just get together and, yeah. and, and do twice as much good. Yeah. I'm still intrigued about um, going from almost like a um, an employed position. Yeah to making the decision to I'm now going to leave that oh. and, and I'm going to I'm yeah. going to go off on an adventure by myself <laughs> where there are a lot more unknowns I mean, we've already done one path change yep to 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 tell um to telethon kids yeah um but there's still elements of I'm employed yes I yeah. have a paycheck etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. so th- yeah. there's a sense of security there yeah and safety but then actually moving from that yeah that's even that's another paradigm shift. it's a big leap of faith hey, yeah. to go you know people tell, tell me about that and and what was going on what the stories you were telling yourself and how you moved on from that i i think the loudest story in my head is always the idea that you've got you can build it and people need it i think that's an optimistic mindset anyway i don't think i'm like the field of dreams yeah build it and they will come yeah 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 and and you know sometimes they do often they don't but sometimes they do and and why they don't is either because truly nobody needs it, or you don't have the right team, or you feel you know you you can be very isolated. Mm. Most people that um, are in startup land will tell you it's a very lonely thing, and and it's a conscious decision for me because I've done it before. I can turn up to an organisation where there's tens of thousands of people or a few thousand people and have fantastic conversations every day and you consciously tear yourself out of that to go sit in an office which is you know about 15 metres from where we sat right now yeah. to sit largely on my own or with Tan who's running our other business. Uh, you, so you sit alone thinking, holy cow, the mortgage is due in how many days? Yeah, and people are going to pay what for this? Oh, that's right, they're not paying anything. Mm, that's stressful. Yeah, uh, but it's it's a risk. But the return in this specific instance that that, that we are talking about today is, or a component of today is, we could bring a million new ideas to create however many thousands of actual validated products was through a funnel of there's millions of ideas to some of them aren't that good to yes. some of them will get investment and some of them you'll see on the shelf so to speak that's a an obviously a declining number over time but that's that's the vision you know that's why yes. I, I get out of bed every day but it's it's a conscious decision to tear yourself out of safety yeah. To get on the roller coaster, isn't it? You could, did, did you go through periods of, oh, I'll do this? No, I'm not. Well, uh, I'll do this? No, I won't. Or was uh, it just, bang, I'm going to do this? Multiple times in my life, I've um, I've been in that startup mode going, the repossession order's coming through for the house. I'd better go get a job to get some money to steady the ship. Yeah. So, fortunately, I think a number of times in my life, I've been a consultant anyway. 
So I've had the ability to, you know, go out, chat to somebody, have you got a problem I can solve and help, and, and then I can get some income. Yes. Um, I appreciate for a lot of people that's not a reality, that, that kind of, you know, option to just get up and cough up some work. And, yeah. and you know, so that that's a challenge that I think as individuals we have to solve. But I've... I've learned to be more confident in the past few years to trust when times get hard, my experiences elsewhere will be of value to somebody that will pay me to come in and help them solve a problem. Yes. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen as quick as I'd like it to, and it really mm -hmm. needs to, but nonetheless, it does make me a little bit more confident perhaps than most people could be yes. to say, I'm going to quit this and I'm going to go do that. And if it doesn't work, like, I can come back. But what I did learn, and, and this is why I think you have to make the jump, is whilst you're in that, I've got to get paid, so I've got to work, you know, eight to twelve hours a day to, you know, to earn the money. Yes. You're not putting the effort into building that dream. Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna keep doing what you do every day, which you've got to turn up, earn a wage, pay your bills, come back home, and so on. I'd, I really like that because that's um, I, I've spoken before about. Um, my little existential crisis that I had during my four months of self-funded long service leave after being made redundant from Chevron. When um, I suddenly sat there and thought, oh, what am I going to do today? Um, well, I don't know because I'm not on holiday. And then I suddenly thought, oh, what would you normally do? Well, I'd normally go to work. And then I suddenly thought, shit, work takes up a lot of time. And then a little voice went, and you don't even enjoy it. And then the, that was the gateway to a four-day mm. existential crisis where I thought to myself, Crikey, how much of my time, and when you say time, you're also talking life, yep. am I trading up um, yep, for, for this sense of security and yep. this, that and the other. And yeah. and yeah, no, don't get me wrong, you know, I've had some fantastic experiences from, from my earlier career, but then you get to this point of, there's just this nagging pull of, yeah. Is this what you want for the next 20, 30 years? It's kind of like a mirage as well. I don't, there's a better word than that, and my age is preventing me from getting yeah. the word out of my head, but it's, we, it's this fantasy we live in of security. Yes. Even if you live in a big mining or work in a big mining organisation, the next day if the price of iron ore goes down, there'll be multiple people that don't have jobs anymore. Well, I, I was you know, one of these. There yeah. you go. So Chevron, uh, multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar company yeah. with big assets all across the world. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, don't Thanks, need Brent. you anymore. Yeah, we don't need you anymore. So they've extracted the value that they can, and when they can't extract it anymore, or you're a cost that's not creating a return on investment, you what do they call it? Surplus to requirements. Exactly. So security is a myth anyway. Yeah. So you're taking a risk every day of your life, but you just don't know it. You've got this kind of mm. fantasy in your head of I've got to work, I'm secure. Yes. Uh, when I when I told my dad, um, my dad came over for our wedding. We got married in the garden here, just where we sat now. Um, and I said, um, "Yeah, Dad, I'm, I'm I've come to the end of the the telethon kids gig. Um, yeah, I've, I've taken a consulting role in in aged care, and uh, and I'm going to quit it and I'm going to do a startup." And, and he said. Oh, son, what are you going to do to, to keep wolves front door? Yeah, put <laughs> and, bread on table. <laughs> yeah, put bread on table and, and all that, that knows. And I'm like, Dad, we, we don't think like that anymore because there's no such thing as rarely, I don't know if any, everybody would necessarily agree, but there's no job for life. Yes. Yeah, you used to go to the bank and work, didn't you? And you always had a job whoever heard yep. of redundancies from banks these days when don't you hear of redundancies from banks yeah. because technology is arriving and scaling and displacing people and so on so and yeah. i think you're tipping something really interesting there because this whole concept of job for life or oh, go and work for that big company because you'll be all right yeah um it, it's almost if you actually peel it back what you're saying is go and do this and, and you'll be all right and and you know the bottom bottom level of i don't know mm. Maslow's hierarchy of needs yep. will get ticked. <laughs> yep. But not many more will. No. And no. and then you'll get the food, you'll get the shelter. You'll get yep. the food, you get the shelter. Get some sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> get you in trouble. Um, but above that, you're never going to reach yeah. self actualization And then everything else, yeah, and everything else is at the women back and call of the company. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
personal development opportunities to yeah. thrive and expand and, yeah. and, and challenge yourself. Yeah. They have to fit in around the, the direction yeah. of the company. If you went to your employer and says, I need to learn to be more empathetic, do you think they'd pay for you to go on a course to do that? Yeah. Now, if you said, I, I can turn a spanner faster if I go on this engineering course, they go, oh, yeah, we'll give you a couple of grand to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the the first one might make you a happy, more productive person exponentially mm. so, you know? Mm. And it's interesting how this whole um, business management layer that pervades society now, mm. as well as the economics yeah. as well, there we, we're continually making economic decisions, you know, when nurse provision of nurses and teachers and things like that mm. when you, if you peel it yeah. back it's like they should just be no-brainers and they should just get they should yeah. just be there yeah so yeah no this is really that's fascinating to listen to so you've you've now made your decision you got married you're going to go and set up a machine yeah. what were some of the first things that you actually did to make it happen so if someone's out there at the moment yeah. got a good idea and they're like right. almost like one of these mm -hmm. turtles should I pop my head out yeah. or should I keep it in the shell <laughs> pop out look about no back in what is what are some of the first things that you did to um get I, I, so let's use that metaphor then. So the turtle and the, the, the head just popping out the shell and having a look around. I guess um, you know, the first thing I tried to do was just to learn a bit. You know, you've, you've got to, if you're going to make a thing, so I'm, I, you know, help build machine. It, they're called digital canvases, you've got bits of paper on your screen and you write stuff on them. It's really that simple. Um, so you look at what else is like that. And that doesn't mean other types of technology. Like people stick post-it notes on walls in workshops. They write things on whiteboard. They scribble things in books. And these are all plans and actions and tasks and to-dos, aren't they? So you've got to look around at what else is there because the biggest thing that you can kid yourself about is there's no competition. Yeah. So I tell people uh, a really stupid example. So let me experiment and see if this makes uh, sense to you, Bryn. There's no such thing as pink paper cups with three handles and black dots on them. So there's no competition. So if I make them, I'll be successful. But the competition is people will drink from the tap. Right. But we don't think about that, do we? We're looking for another cup with four handles and three handles is more efficient. So we've got a, a point of difference. Yeah, you grab it so, from any angle. Yeah. So you, you get up and, and you do, you stick your head out and you have a look around and then you go back in the shell and then you digest and you learn. Uh, and that doesn't have to be years, months, weeks. It can be days. Go talk to people. What problems have you got? What is it worth for that problem not to be part of your life anymore? And then go back to base and think, okay, so we're starting to get an idea of what do people need and what kind of solutions are acceptable. And then the next thing to, to, uh, to explore is you've got to look at why wouldn't they use your solution? So uh, I wake up tomorrow, I build a fantastic online account system. Why wouldn't you when there's only zero and QuickBooks in the market? Yes. Killing it. So of course that's a smart thing to do. And they go, but mine's better. And you can prove it's better. But the problem is that everybody's information is over there in QuickBooks land or in Xero land and nobody's going to type it into your yes. account system again. So you've got to learn about all these forms of resistance, of objections, of, yeah, Chris, your, your solution's awesome. I love it, but I just can't be asked typing all my data into that again. Yes. So no. <laughs> yeah. So these are all the things. Come out the shell, have a look around, go back in. But don't bet your house, don't bet the farm, don't sell the kids, don't kick the dog really just take a little bit of time to think about these different um, angles uh, on your idea and then you'll move forward more confidently and actually more encouraged by all of those people you've spoken to that go well actually it makes sense to me as well and that's a that's a much more reassuring thing to do when you go yeah it's not just me that thinks this uh, and then I'll probably just draw the, these sets of comments to uh, to a close bring just by saying um, the biggest killer that I hear people get advice for, uh, uh, this, this advice is given to them by business experts, is don't tell anybody about your idea. Right. Okay. Uh, and I'm borrowing from other people that have said much wiser things. Uh, and it, But it just makes sense to me. You go, if you share your idea, somebody's going to nick it and build it. But what you imagine is what they're equally as well resourced as you are or equally as well gifted and talented as you mm. are. Or they don't have 99 other ideas that really need to take yours because that's then their yeah. purpose in life. So it's just... Or they might be as... 
Are they as passionate as you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and rarely they are, and mm. rarely they, they, you know, they don't believe what you believe, so customers that believe what you believe, they won't jump somewhere else, they'll stay with you because they love you. Yeah. They, love, they don't love what you do, they love what you believe and why you do it, so they just happen mm. to, you know, exchange value with you. So I think, this I think another thing, part of that as well, um, and, and I notice it more and more, with online courses and what have you, you know, because there's that standard funnel of I'll do some webinars yeah. to get people in. Yeah. And what you find is, is that they're actually giving away all the information in the webinar. Yeah. And um, you're not actually going to learn that much new in the course than you will do in the webinar. But the difference is, and, you know, to your point of sharing your idea, is by and large, most people have great ideas, but by and large, people do not act on their no. ideas. No, they don't feel confident to do so mostly yeah. again i need that job i need that money i've got to pay those bills is one mm. of the biggest drivers or it's just a lack of self-belief um I, I can't name names but i had a conversation with a lady a few days ago that um you know when people flee domestic violence this is one of the few people that will come running at you going there's a bag of clothes there's some food for the kids there's some clothes for the kids and she's shy to go out and ask for money because she do she doesn't believe she can convince anybody i said well you've just convinced me and it only took you 60 seconds so there's just a lack of confidence mm. Uh, I'm and, not and, good enough. I'm not deserving. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I won't be that one, but stop it because it's nobody else. It has to be you. Yes. I, you know, in the last 2014, so we're nearly four years on. In the last four years of being involved in startups, in social em impact, social enterprises, that's and, and obviously there are lots of people doing this in the world. So don't get me wrong, but that's the first person I've had a conversation with that said, I could be that person that helps those in desperate need. And that's the first person I'd ever heard talk about that idea. Now, I'm not going to go nick it and do it. I, I, I want to help her. I want to give her a bit of technology that people can go, 1-800, I've just left a domestic violence uh, circumstance and, and I need stuff to help my kids. Yes. Yeah, so I want to help people that do that, but I'm not going to nick the idea and, uh, and so on. But yeah, so confidence and yeah, you have to do it because if you don't, who will? And why mm. should it be somebody else? Why would you wait mm. for somebody else to do that, to solve that problem? Get on, get on with it. It's interesting because it, it's almost like reshaping the stories you're telling yourself at that point. It, it, do you know it's all about the stories that you tell yourself, isn't it? Have you ever, I'm sure you have, Mike, but I'll, 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 I'll ask the question for the audience. Have you ever, ever heard this saying of, if you say you can or you say you can't, you're right? Yeah. And that's true. You don't stop telling yourself you can't because you don't know. You haven't tried. Yeah. There's just a fear attached to that, right? Yeah. So press the pause on the fear cassette that's playing inside your head and pretend that you can. Don't believe that you can. Just pretend you can. Just go, oh, yeah, actually, do you know what? I, I think I could stand in front of an investor tomorrow and go, if you give me 50 grand, I can form a little business that will go and help uh, victims of domestic violence and that will reduce the costs to the community by 5%. I think you'd find an investor within a week that would back something like that. Yeah. Just, just pretend, just it's fake it. it. Fake it till you make it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, define, we define ourselves by the stories yeah. we tell ourselves. Uh, exactly right. And it's, you know, that's oversimplifying, but it does tell you about those messages in your head, as you rightly say. The stories you tell yourself will inspire, inspire or inhibit you. Mm. Mm. So within the, the machine canvas and the process, have you built in uh, levels of accountability into that? Yeah, that's fascinating. Because, yeah. um, you know, again... I've seen numerous courses, numerous uh, endeavors where it sounds awesome. Yeah. And then uh, people are dropping off and dropping off. Yeah. Now, at the same time, I myself went on a course um, last year, which was a podcasting course. And I've said before, well, the, the actual technical capability of what I've learned was, you know, it wasn't at a ridiculously high level, but it was what I needed. The levels of accountability that I had to go through during that eight weeks meant yeah. that we now have WA Real. Yeah. Um, so if, if I, uh, I, I, I guess we don't need to do this. I can prove you're successful because you you ask 
Chris, do you want to come and, and do this article on WA Rail with you? I got, yeah, I trust this guy. He can do this and he can help get the message, not my message, but the startup message and the, the social impact message out there. So you're clearly successful. You might not have thought you could have been. You've done that course. You've picked up some skills and that's a great way. Mm. But did you say to yourself... I bet you did. I bet you thought, I'm going to get 10,000 subscribers in week one and I'll have a million by the end of year one and it'll be, I'll be globally dominating by year five well, or yeah, something. When, <laughs> when episode two got downloaded over 2,000 times, thanks yeah. to the guests that I picked, I thought, yeah. wow, off we go. It, yeah. It's not quite been like that yeah. since, but yeah, yeah, we're still... Yeah, it's sure. a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. And there's the moments of joy and doubt Yes. Where, you know, I, so I'll write some content on LinkedIn. I'll be really transparent with you. The, these are what we call vanity metrics. You can't put them in the bank. Yep. Nobody really cares. But geez, they're comforting. Yes. You know? So I'll write an article on LinkedIn. I'll throw it out there, and I'll usually get, let's just say, four to five thousand readers. Uh, and this is um, like a congratulations to the community. If it's about social impact. If it's about why do we represent women a certain way on social media, it goes 9,000 plus. So you find a message and a thing to share that attaches uh, people attached mm. to passionately. That, you know, they'll, they'll consume that all day because it makes a difference to them. It's valuable to them. Yes. Um, but if, uh, yeah, I guess if I, yeah, I've, I've written about machine and gone, hey, sign up, it's free and it help, help you plan and get this stuff out of your head, I'll get half as many. It's still four or five thousand, but it's not as many as if I say what I'm about to tell you will help you make a difference twice as many. Yes. Yeah. So I think this, uh, yeah, this whole thing of, of having something that makes a difference that connects to people, mm. uh, where you can measure. So what? Mm. Um, so so this is what we did. Putting it really simply, imagine you've got three boxes on a canvas, and these uh, the one of the boxes is uh, who are the customers, and I got. I have this crazy example we've built into machine. When you sign up, it creates a canvas for a surf shop because I'm clearly a cool surfer dude, right? Yeah. I know all yeah. about it. Uh, so we called it Salty Waves and we pretend that this Salty Waves canvas is how are we going to make surfboards for kids that are cheap, affordable and cool. Um, so in this canvas, you can see, we think we're going to sell surfboards to 18 to 24 year olds. Now, if you use canvases in their traditional sense, you just write that down. I'm going to sell surfboards to 18 to 24 year olds. Mm. I think I'll need a Facebook advert. I think I'll need some Instagram content. And then I think I'm going to turn over a million dollars. And that's what most plans are. You put them in your top drawer and you go, I've got a plan and you never see it again. Yes. The next thing that you do on machine is say, I promise to get 500 18 to 24 year olds to sign up or like on my Facebook page by the end of quarter one in 2018. And all it is is a simple progress bar. You put a target number in and you yeah. put where you are today. Right. No complex business intelligence, Excel spreadsheets and Google Sheets and all that stuff. Yeah. You just go, I promise to do this by then in this particular area of my business. Yes. So it might be sales to a particular demographic or engagement in a particular content channel. Um, so, yeah, so that's how we create accountability because then in our team we say, well, how many of those million ideas have we brought to our platform this month? Yes. And I'll be really frank with you, mate, in February it's a donut. Yeah. So we've got to wake up tomorrow and know what to do to get at least one idea because then we've moved closer to a million. Yes. If it's still a donut tomorrow, we've not moved any closer and we need to learn why. Mm. So then we'll go back and improve our product, our messaging, our marketing uh, until we get it right. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So um, I picked up on something, um, which I think I, I, I sort of worked out in the research is that so to sign up and use machine is, is a free service? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How are you making money? Yeah, okay. So Because um, you do have to put bread on too. Yeah, I have to. So, Dad, the wolves aren't at door yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So it, it's it's one of these things that you've got to build the value before people will believe it exists. Mm. I can't say uh, to investors, for example... Um, I'm going to bring a million ideas to you and you're going to have uh, first shout at investing in them or not. He's going to say, well, show them me. And I can't. 
Yeah. So I have to build this community of you know impatient innovators. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but they've all got good ideas. Uh, of the million ideas, we think half a million will move to this position of clarity. Yeah. You know, people can communicate the idea and inspire others as to why it's a good idea. Uh, and then there could be 250,000 prototypes. And those prototypes could be things that people code. People uh, scribble things on paper and explain it. Yep. Um, or we go out into the world and we go, look at that there. I'm going to do it like this in the future, whatever. And then maybe, and I think this might be pessimistic, but we start with a million and we come down to 25,000 proven things that the world says yes we'll buy it yes if you get to that point with your business there's an investor waiting because why wouldn't they invest you've proven that you've solved a challenge that's worth solving a problem worth solving that people are willing to pay money for it and then they'll invest so my challenge is get the get the i don't need a million but the journey for the million people on one side of the market to uh a uh, carefully selected group of investors on the opposite side of the market the monetization uh, potential in between those two points is experts like ourselves that have lived experience of starting up falling on our bum dusting off and getting back up again so we could say for example we might say uh bring you've done your canvas mate that's awesome good job uh, for $30 I'll give you a personal 20 minute review of your canvas right. and find those ways to improve it right. so in this marketplace of consulting and expertise now people mm. with their startup ideas at an affordable price point can gain expertise in discrete bite sized chunks and then go away and move forward with their dream so that's the, the the first stage of making money the second stage is when the investors come to town and say I need more good deals which yes. means investable value propositions to use a technical term so yeah show me something I can invest in and that's, then linking that's where we go in yeah and connect the two up excellent and that that actually answers another question I had which was <clears throat> um, you know where is the human interaction yes in because again um you know, i'm 43 so i grew up at a point where i didn't have a mobile phone and etc etc yeah. etc and now it's new to my life and there's still i like i like tangibly writing things down mm. and also i like to interact with people yeah you, know, you can buy things online but then i do actually you know mm. let's take for instance go to walls or college uh walls or college um calls or woolies yeah yeah, there's the option to just barcode scan yeah. things and walk yeah. out and not yeah. talk to someone. I'll go, I'll go in the line because yeah. I just like to talk to people. Yeah, at least you've said hello. How was your day? How's your day? Etc. Yeah. Etc. Et yeah. So yeah, that, I was going to and ask hopefully about hopefully they've asked you back. They don't always, yeah. by yeah. the way. So, but it's it's <laughs> that it's that need to connect. Yeah, um, it's the need to feel listened to. Yeah, and and get your point across, um, which part of why I do the podcast yeah um but where yeah I was going to ask where does that sit in the process yeah so um it goes right back to the beginning and then throughout mm. of saying I've built a widget in my case it's called machine in somebody else's case it could be a felt tip pen but when you use it I go was that any good were there any kind of you know you think oh it was a bit difficult to use it wasn't comfortable to hold that pen in my case the lights on moment and what told me that we were on the right mission. Uh, I'll probably remake the point again. I was doing something that other people had been doing for 10 years, so but they hadn't solved this fundamental problem. When you look at an empty canvas, you're overwhelmed. I wouldn't have learned that if I hadn't talked to real people and just yeah. offered some value. Uh, all I said was, Look, I'm, I would love to give you some mentoring if you think I can help you with your startup journey. And so we'd jump on a video call. Uh, and video calls are great because, yeah, it means that we don't have to drive for an hour through Perth traffic. We just get on the call. Yep. Um, so one of my colleagues I work with is in Mandra, the other one's uh, north of uh, Clarkson. Uh, and we just have a chat and go, how's your canvas going? And we look at the canvas. And they can see how agitated I am going, what do you mean you're going to sell to these people but you're not advertising in their, you know, Facebook feeds and, and Instagram feeds and so on. So yeah. that human interaction... And I think video more so because of that, you know, your body language and the, you know, what do we say that 20% of the conversation is like in the text and 80% of it's non-verbal and, yeah, absolutely, you know, yeah. yeah. So that you're right, you, you, you're right, you know, you exchange passion, you motivate each other by mm. meeting 
uh, either online or you know, but with video, I, I think is the the biggest value. Um, it, yeah, you need that human connection to continue your journey, keep inspiring each other, yep. and keep learning. Being so, held accountable. Yeah. So for machine uh, accountability, looks like why don't you fill the canvas in? Oh, I've been busy this week. And, well, your idea has gone nowhere then. So what are you going to do next week? Oh, yeah. I'll get this, that, and the other done. So you go right, cool. Well, we'll meet again next week and move it forward. Now, by the way, how could I have helped you in the limited time that you've got? Do that canvas more efficiently, yes, so that you weren't too busy. And then I'll go. Oh, yeah, they tried, but it was hard, and they didn't have time to figure out this complex monster. So then I come away thinking, yeah, you weren't lazy. I've got a crap tool and I need to improve yeah. it. Yeah. Or you might come away from it and go, start yeah. of excuses there. Yeah. Yeah. And, not... and and make it clear to them. Yeah. 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 Are you just letting yourself off the hook there? Being yeah. honest and open. Yeah. What are some of the things that you've um, sort of learned about yourself whilst developing machine? <sighs> whilst developing machine? I, I think I've given myself more permission to be me, you know, to, to be to be okay at building stuff that, that people may or may not need. Yeah. Um, but I, I also, uh, I mean, not specifically just while building machine, but over, certainly in the years since I've been in Western Australia, I've lear learned my, uh, I guess, a, a gift from my mum is people skills. So I can be incredibly technical, but I can talk to people. And if you can do that, you can build bridges between problems yeah. and solutions. So that's been a journey of, geez, at least 16 years um, of getting better at that. So I'm aware when I'm talking too much, I hope. Uh, I'm aware when I'm confusing people, I hope. Uh, but I also know when I'm right on the money and people have just gone, geez, yeah, this looks like it might work and solve our mega problem. Yeah. Um, uh, if I can uh, divert back to Telethon Kids, for example, so they, they invite me in and trust me to transform their technology, but then tell me that, well, we can't afford to transform the technology. So I've been helped build three consultancies in Perth that consult on technology, obviously have a good network. So I was able to uh, to go to some great organisations like NEC and Oakton and say, guys, I need new kit. It's going to cost one and a half mil. Uh, I've only got 350 grand, but you're going to give it me, aren't you? Because it's for the kids. And they said, yeah, we are. So that ability to be able to tell that story of I need this because um, meant we got $1.2 million of value in, in monetary terms that we, we couldn't have afforded, but because people shared that belief, shared that mission. Um, so I don't know whether it's uh, something I've learnt about myself, but I have learnt is yeah communicate that why and thank you Simon Sinek for that. That's a, a great yes. message to to learn start to with absorb. Start why. Yeah, yeah. Start with the why you do what you do, not what you do. Because uh, yeah. back to my paper cups, there would be lots of paper cups in the world. But if I said, you know, I believe mine would give you cleaner water, and the world needs cleaner water, so that's why I make them. Then you're probably going to buy my cup. Yeah, because uh, you understand why I'm doing it and what the value is to you. Um, so yeah, I, I think these are just things that are uh, over the years I've gathered. Some are internal insights, uh, and it's really machine is embodying those lessons, if you yes. like, and also the lessons I still continue to learn from the team. Going, don't say it like that. That's yes. not the message. You know, that's not a this. That's not a that. So yeah, you, you're always learning like that anyway. But yeah. um, uh, I feel much more relaxed about this than past startups, uh, and I think that's because I I now recognise it's not just on me. And I think that's why you do need to talk about your ideas so you will inspire other people to join you on the mission so they can share the burden and that you're a thousand times more valuable to the world because all of these cracks and weaknesses and stuff that you shit at, people yeah. in your team will be immensely gifted at. Um, so, yeah, mm. that's that's probably learning to to trust more and let people in and not feel I have to carry it on my own um, is uh, immensely liberating and, and you know why wouldn't you want to you know 
take on a, a crusade where you've got crusaders with you. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to be that one lonely person at the at the front charging ahead on your horse going, yes, and then yeah. you look behind you and there's nobody with you. Yes, that's a worry. <laughs> you've mentioned a couple of times this concept of uh, a social business. Mm. Can you explain what what that means yeah um it's probably um uh, an emerging or clarity is emerging particularly in western australia where in other areas of the world they are considerably uh, further ahead in understanding it um so I, i'll probably if i if i think of it as social business is a word or social enterprise but i think it's a combination of two things profit and more importantly purpose Right. So I believe that I don't think there's any room uh, on this planet for businesses that don't have a social positive social impact. Right. I don't care if you make a hole in the ground, but BHP gave twenty million dollars to the Telethon Kids Institute. Yeah. So there's a corporate social responsibility. I don't think people will do business with organisations in the not too distant future unless they can see that being demonstrated. Yes. We extract this value here, we pay people, we give them jobs, but we also help this mission over here. Yes. Uh, and that's because I identify with my own skills. I can't uh, cure childhood diseases, but I can sort some technology out and enable people to get going and do it. So, you know, you just have to, um, I think, yeah, I'll come back to the point. So just simply that I I find the message of profit and purpose is very comforting to people to go, well, of course I have to make money, I've got to pay my bills. Yes. But that's what makes your business sustainable. Yeah. But that's a barrier that uh, the social entrepreneurs need to get over. Go. How can I make? A, how can I do some good but make a profit doing it? Yeah. Go. Well, how can you pay your bills if you don't? And how you can make a, a profit, for example, is you save somebody else a cost. Mm. So you might be trying to solve social housing and you have the ability to connect and motivate people in a way that isolated, siloed organisations can't. Um, so, uh, yeah, so my friend uh, uh, Ian that's uh, launched um, uh, an organisation called Hugar, uh, he has that ability to connect all these people reduce wait lists, reduce the number of empty properties and take millions off the cost of doing that. So that's a social return on investment. So you say, well, now I've got a business that saves the government millions. Yes. Well, now that's profitable, so it's sustainable, so it will make a difference long into the future. Whereas if you say I have to be a charity, you'll be fighting for a piece of that dollar in somebody's wallet next yeah. to every other charitable organisation on the planet. Mm. And that's hard work. Hmm. So, um, if we look forward to the next sort of three to five years, what does success look like for Chris? Yeah, I think I've got two things that are really shouting in my head um, for the last few days thinking about this question. And I think the first one, which feeds to the second, the first one is, yeah, I needed a simpler way of saying what I'm doing. We've talked about machine. It's got an odd spelling, if I can just spell it out. It's M-A-S-H, like mash, like yeah. mashed potato, and E-A-N, which is from lean. So if we build machine and it's these digital canvases, thanks to the builders a few doors away. Yes, we've, we've, had, we've had airplanes, which have been fine, but now we've got builders going. Helicopters and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, sorry, I just lost my train. Um, so the yeah, next so, three to five years. So simply put, um, we needed to find a better way or a more succinct way to say to slightly knowledgeable people about what we do, what we are. So there's this great work management tool called Trello. Yes. Sold a few years ago for four hundred and twenty-five million dollars to Atlassian, a fantastic Australian organisation. I think that we could become the Trello of innovation. Right. So we give you those little tasks that you move around, that you hold hold yourself accountable to do, that move your business forward. If and I'm not saying we're going to sell for four hundred twenty-five million, please Lord, that's true. But if we build this to to be something that we can exit then that will make us financially independent where I can find somebody else in the world that wants to make a difference and can, and I can join their mission. Yes. That's really what success looks like in two steps. Excellent. Excellent. Um, what's, um, what is it that keeps you motivated? Uh, do you know, I, I, I have... 
I honestly have no idea. Uh, it'll probably be... In fact, I, you know, I was thinking this morning, this is a bit of a tangent, that why wouldn't I be motivated? I would be waking yeah. up. I'd be waking up going, there's nothing to build, there's no bugs to fix, there's no yeah. widget to improve. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, my purpose is in getting up and, and helping somebody build something that's useful to them. So yeah. I think yeah, I can almost answer the opposite easier. But I think it's optimism. I mean, that's what drags me out of bed is that today could be awesome because like, I'm excited to share that we've got a new feature in the platform. I'm excited to tell the team that 10 new people have signed up overnight. Uh, I'm excited that, you know, 9,000 people have hit my LinkedIn content that talks about social impact and promotes organizations like Impact Seed that uh, find investment for social enterprises. That, you know, it, it's that mm. validation as well. So validation and optimism when you go, yeah, people get it and they want more of this type of content, this message, this inspiration. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of the, the fuel in the tank, right. if you like, yeah. Superb. If you could... Um go back and and um have a quick chat with the chris that dropped out of college yeah um what piece of advice would you give him oh dear lord that's a tough one because uh, you know it's one of those things like uh, is it back to the future where you change something then everything unravels yes <laughs> um i think i would try to find a way to be more patient because but i know why i'm I know why I am impatient. I mean, there's there's the obvious answer of I want to I want to get where I'm going quicker, but that's mm. not really it. Um, I'll tell you another very quick story, if I may. It's uh, I used to write computer games. I had no money, so I couldn't afford books. So I had to get in the bookshop, super quick, read some chapters, learn to do something, run home, write a bit more of the game, and you know. So that's why my mind is impatient because I, I'm under pressure to right. get something done, learn something quick, then go do whatever it is I'm supposed Coming to be doing. Coming back those experiences. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I would say uh, right now you've got to train yourself to be able to go somewhere quiet, sit, stop, think. Right. Don't just keep hammering away because you're going to waste a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, yes. piss a lot of people off. Um, so I think in, I think learning to be more patient. Um, it, it, I know this now. I wish I knew it then would, would, would be to be more empathetic. Yes. Um, so uh, I don't know what I can share from personal experiences, but there are things in my past that I've I've now forgiven people for but I hope they've forgiven me for treating them the way I did at the time because I mm. didn't understand. Uh, but I do now. So you know, the, uh, yeah, I've 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 lived with alcoholism. I've lived with, um, you know, people that have um, been victims of of sexual violence, and uh, and I've I think I've been a good person at the time, but I think I could have been a lot better. So when they've acted a particular way I've been maybe unforgiving not understanding and I think I would go back to not even that younger college me even somebody 10 years ago or 20 years right. ago I'd go back to myself at those key moments and go this isn't what you think it is it's not the way that you feel it is it's this yes and step outside yourself and get over yourself yes <laughs> yeah I, get I think it, out the way <laughs> yeah 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 get out get out of the way yeah well said I, I think I would uh, I would share a few nuggets of wisdom brilliant yeah and finally what piece of advice would you would you give somebody we, I think we've touched on a lot of this but what mm. piece of advice would you give somebody who's sitting there listening to this let's archetypally say they're sitting in a corporate job that they're yep bit unhappy and not extracting a lot of meaning from and mm. they've got some good ideas what's some of the first things that they can do um can I give you a couple of answers sure uh, yeah okay so I think um, uh, my wife Tan coined, coined this for me a, a few days ago and it's slightly different from just do it it's just get on with it um, and I'll tell you the difference uh, I think just do it means you're going to do the whole thing regardless of what anybody says just get on with it go from start to finish and that's building something hoping there's a market for it yes. and there might not be just get on with it means at least take the first step be that turtle, stick your head out, go, hey, if I did this on Monday, would you buy it? 
And then somebody goes, now, nah. and you go, mm, okay, I better try one of my other ideas. Yes. Then. <laughs> so just get on with it. At least make a start. At least yeah. explore it, you know. Uh, press pause on the fear and just pretend that you can. Um, uh, no, actually, I don't think there are many stories. I think those are the two th- the two key things, the difference mm. between just do it and just get on with it. Just At least make it. a start and try get it. Get on with know? the process. I always Press say, them. yeah, what's the worst thing that can go wrong? Yeah, somebody you, says, no, it's a crap idea. Yeah, and you feel hurt by that, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's where the emotion and the fear comes from. But you'll have another idea. Or as happened in 2014, don't worry if you've not got any ideas because somebody else has got an idea that will change the world. It was called the Telethon Kids Institute, so I joined somebody else's why until I figured out what, what mine was. Your own why was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So join a mission. You don't necessarily have to have your own. Mm. Yeah. like it. like it. Chris, it's been super great talking to you today. Thank you so uh, much. Planes aside, <laughs> it's been kind of fun. Um, Makes it no, organic. Really, yeah, it does. It does. I really, I really enjoyed the conversation. I really enjoyed listening to your journey, moving from, uh, particularly from, you know, your more established roles in the journey to the telethon kids, and and then from that, I think there's there's been tons in there for anybody who's sitting there going, oh, what can I do? Where can I go? This, that, the other. You know, just get on with it chuck, mm. chuck a few ideas out there and yeah. even go and engage with machine so how can somebody get involved with it yeah sure so you can go to machine.io m-a-s-h-e-a-n.io and just sign up for a free account yep yeah that's it and you can contact me at mentor at machine.io and i'll personally respond to any emails yeah yeah it can just be calls for help how do i why should i just contact me and we'll have a chat excellent because again, one of the one of the big things I'm I'm, I'm exploring with um, with the podcast is how people can move towards being all that they can be, mm-hmm. and part of that is coming up with good ideas, taking action, and trying to add value and yeah. uh, service and community back, yeah. whilst also making some money for themselves and doing it in a sustainable manner. That doesn't mean that you're trading your life and yeah. and your soul away at the same time. And so to get to speak to you about not only your journey, but your tool and how it works and, and, and how people can just take those first steps, um, I think is super invaluable. Yeah, so fantastic. thank you very much for your time today. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to hearing how Machine progresses towards yeah. its million dollar, million ideas. <laughs> yeah, million we'll dollar see. ideas. <laughs> Maybe we've got idea Indeed. number one and two today. Thanks, thank you very much, Chris. Cheers, mate. Cheers.